In this video, we're going to be making custom sets that LEGO would have never made. Let's get to it. Honestly, the set that we need the most has to be the Coal Golem from Dragon's Rising Season 1. I'm really surprised this isn't actually a set because we got two Coal Mechs this year, even though this one pretty much did the exact same thing. Like, some guy at LEGO really said, hey, why don't we just create a whole new mech and waste some more money to do the same exact thing? Now, you might be wondering, why another Coal set? And yeah, Coal does have a ton of figures this way. He had a figure in the combo car, then Tournament Temple City, he had an exclusive figure in Cole's Titan mech, and then he also appeared in a pulley bag. So what's going to be so special about another cheap one? Now not only do we need a Cole Golem, but we actually need an RX figure of Cole. The last one we got was in Day of the Departed, and that was exclusive to one set. I'm just somehow lucky to have it, but come on LEGO, that was 8 years ago. So then I went ahead and started cooking, but then also I did have to do some research. I actually did not have a bunch of small LEGO mechs in the past. I had the Kilo vs. Pixel, and then the Core Kai and the Core Zane mechs, and then I did get the Samurai X mech. However, in the past year, I've gotten the Coles mech, the Kai mech, the J mech, the Wolf Warrior mech, and Sora's mech, which really did help me figure out how I'm going to build this mech. And here it is. But let's start off by talking about the minifigures. In this set, we have Arx Cole as well as two Wolf Warrior figures. Not only do the new Wolf Warriors look like something out of Ghostbusters, they're also super hard to get. The only way you can get them is by buying the combo car, the battle arena, or the Source Dragon in motion. Meaning, if you bought the entire wave, you would have only gotten three Wolf Masks. And along with the figure selection, there is Cole RX, and here's a better look at Cole's arms. So for the Cole Mac, this actually has a ton of posability. There's actually a ton of freedom on the ball socket joint for the arms, so you can actually pose this thing at a bunch of different angles. The leg also has a similar amount of freedom, but not only does it have just this one ball joint, it also has a knee joint, so you can actually move the knee to have a bunch of more different types of posing. And it also has feet articulation, so again, more angles. Here's a full 360 of the set, it would approximately retail for around $20, and it has a little over 200 pieces. I originally forgot to mention, but you can actually open the cockpit up really easily and put in coal, and close it, and it works well. And now that we got one of the sets out of the way, it's time to make another one. Now this is a bit of a difficult choice. There are a ton of things in Dragon's Rising that should have been made. However, one of the most influential candidates has to be Rontu. Rontu is a Spinjitzu master and is really good at the Rising Dragon Strike, and she mainly served as Sora, Lloyd, and Ryu's teacher. She actually helped Lloyd get over his Source Dragon vision. <sighs> Rontu told me I can't force the universe to bend to my will. I have to find my place in its current. Allow the visions to come, to flow. Finally allowing Lloyd to do the Rising Dragon Strike. In fact, Rontu's friend that trained the ninja with her happens to be Eagle, who did get a LEGO set all the way back in January. And fun fact, I did get the official set for Eagle, which also happens to be my only LEGO dragon, so I had to do a ton of research to create Rontu. But now it's time to talk about minifigures. In Ninjago Dragons Rising, Jay has had less than 3 minutes of screen time. And not to mention, a good chunk of it is just flashbacks. My teammate Jay and I got into a fight because he was totally annoying and I was completely blameless. During the fight, we broke the wall, making a crack in the shape of a bowl of noodles. Cole and Jay thought it looked so delicious, they got hungry, stopped the fight, and went to Chen's noodle house together. However, Lego has still been giving him plenty of sets, as well as nod kitted suits. Dragon's Rising Season 1, he got a merge suit, and then for Dragon's Rising Season 2, he got a mech suit, as well as a climber suit. But he still hasn't got an attorney suit that is like the other ninjas. So I got on an editor and started drafting up the prints for Jay. I finished the prints, and then I put them on mecha bricks, and then I built them on mecha bricks. But then... It's a cool figure and all, but what is better than a digital minifigure? A real one. So I got tape, glue, scissors, and my printer. I printed out the paper. Now I was finally done and was holding in hand a Tournament of Sources J. However, he is definitely missing something. A weapon. I took the one from Evil J and then just recolored it in golden to make it look like a hero weapon. The weapon that I think he would use. 
The next character that needs to be created is Nock. He's a member of the Forbidden Five who helped create Shatterspin and started the Wolf Clan. And the Nemomo actually made the figure and sent it to me for this video. The printing is all perfect. It literally has head printing as well as torso, leg, and even toe printing. So make sure to go check out Nemomo's Instagram account. I've linked him in the description below. So after a whole week of working, I was finally able to complete Brawn 2. Now before you try to figure out this best, let's talk about the minifigures. On the hero side, which are just and ninja team, you get Sora, Nia, and Che. And on the villain side, you have Noct as well as two wolf mask warriors. Now for the actual build of the set, you can see I've added two black trees with a zipline on it. The black tree is actually inspired by the eagle set. And then I also took the zipline idea from the tournament temple city. Now the tournament temple city zipline doesn't really work as you can see once you put the figure, it doesn't really go all the way. But I thought this would be cool and it actually works since there's more space. Along with that, there's actually a way to come back this with the Tournament Temple City and the Tournament Battle Arena and the Pulley Bag. And here is a render of Sora using the zip line between the two trees. Now, speaking of climbing hooks, where do you get them? You actually get them at this stand. This stand has two climbing hooks, two katanas, the new katanas, and two spears because I thought those would be interesting pieces to include in this. Not only that, but this build actually uses the same base as the one in the Pulley Bag, so you can actually connect this to that too. And the next up is the actual build of Rontu. I gave her Ryu sized wings because her wings are definitely smaller than other dragons and in the show it is also pretty small. Here you can get a glimpse of the type of articulation used. I actually used ratchet joints because that has a lot of different poseability. And then there's also poseability on the feet so you can actually turn that around for all four limbs. In the middle I actually added two of those ball joints because those are strong but at the same time at a good range of posability to Vontu, so you can actually bend hips. You can actually see I added a ton of posability and joints to the tail too. I added a seat, or I guess a saddle, to Vontu. I did this because I thought Eagle pretty much had a seat on him and LEGO intended that, so I wanted to do something similar for Vontu. And then if you want to look at Vontu's head posability options, you can see she actually has quite a bit. You can move her neck as well as her head with the ratchet joints. Here is a 360 degree turnaround. This set has 535 pieces and would probably retail for approximately $60, about $10 less than Eagle. By the way, make sure you rate these sets out of 10 in the comments below. I would love to hear your feedback. One thing we need in Ninjago are battle packs. Now you might be like, hey, don't we already have a battle pack? And this battle pack has two ninja as well as two villains. But it's not really stackable because you'll end up with a bunch of extra jades. And then of course a bunch of Floyds. Star Wars actually does this right till this day. You have like a $20 battle pack with four minifigures that you can actually use to army build armies. Ninjago used to actually do minifigure blister packs. Here's one with Jay Zane and two Storm Warriors. This one has Kai Clutch Power and two of those like villains from season 11. Here we have a possession pack with tournament Kai and Jay. An exclusive tournament Zane figure with Samurai X and two other pirates. An elemental master blister pack that comes with Ash, which was actually Cinder's predecessor, along with Shade and Skylar. Like this one is just absolutely crazy. And then moving on to battle packs that actually do their job, here we have the Oni battle pack which is really cool, you can actually stack on your Onis. And another really cool Zane vs Ninjoids battle pack. And I actually want to do my own thing with Wolf Mask Warriors. Here is the entire battle pack that I built. I think this would not be a minifigure pack but one of those things that goes in those battle pack boxes. Here's the entire minifigure selection consisting of 3 wolf warriors with the little claws in the back and then one wolf warrior that just that would be flying on his glider. This is the actual glider build, it's relatively simple. If you're wondering how I got the fire coming down from the bottom, I actually used some snot pieces as seen in the image above to create that effect. For the wings, I used a Nexo Knight shield piece and then connected a little angled brick to make it look like real wings. And then moving on to the bike build. So the bike build has these little guns at the front and then you can see that I have a motorcycle here. The bike uses a bike frame to hold the wheels and then on top of that, everything else is there. I use the same Nexonite piece to create the same seat cushion you see in the back and here's an official rendered image of the guns being shot. In Dragon's Rising Season 2, we got mechs for every single ninja but Zane and Nia. Despite being a 4 plus set and like honestly little trash, we still do have an Aaron mech. Sora's mech is definitely one of the cooler elemental mech builds. Cole's mech is definitely the strongest of them and the sturdiest. Jay's mech is ridiculously small but very poseable and easy to work with. We do have a Kai elemental mech which is easily one of the best sets this year with two mechs in this one set. 
A pretty cool Loy mech that looks like a samurai, but oh well. And we also have rumors for two different Zane mechs coming out next year in January 2025. <laughs> and that leaves us with Mia, who should have probably gone in a mech, but never got a mech due to the fact it was just scrapped or something. It was an unreleased concept art, so I think something was going to happen. And so then I created this mech. This mech not only has one mech in the set, but two mechs. Here we have a Nia mech, and on the other side we have a Wolf Mask Warrior mech. So let's discuss the figures first. On the hero side, we have Tournament Kai and Nia both dripped out in tournament armor. Next up, we have two Wolf Mask Warriors, one with Uga Booga hands and the other one just being a normal Wolf Mask Warrior. So for Nia's mech, I used dark red, light blue, and golden, as well as some gunmetal gray and black, as well as some darker gray. I did this so the mech has more contrast and doesn't feel so bland. And in the set specifically, Nia comes with a spear. And here we have the Wolf Mask Warrior Evo mech. This is supposed to be an upgrade from the one that we got in the January wave. This isn't as easy to break off. And it has like a gun as well as a sword. So it's a much better opponent than the one we got last wave. And is a good opponent for Nia. I pretty much spammed a red and medium lilac color scheme. Then we also have the Wolf Mask Cam. So on the side here, you can actually see a Wolf Mask Warrior head. It's just a head that you can move up and down, play around with it. And then on the side of that, we also do have a little watchtower for a Wolf Mask Warrior to get on and shoot down any heroes that try to get in their way. It has four different guns and two that are detachable, and it turns around so it can go any which way. And that is it for this video. If you guys enjoyed the video, please go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button. I am so tired. But more importantly, I would like you guys to comment down on every single set what you would rate out of 10 and would you actually buy them for the prices listed. As for LEGO Ideas, I've put them up on LEGO Ideas. They just need to be approved. So I'm not sure they'll be out by the time this video releases, but I will put the links in the comments as well as the description. So make sure to check that and I probably will also put it in a community post. But yeah. Thank you guys again so much for watching and bye.